Hi, this is Sandeep. In today's video, I want to show how you can use multivariate clustering in Power BI using the built-in uh, scatterplot and uh, the clustering algorithm that's available in Power BI. So for this video, um, the data set that I'm going to use is actually on Power BI's website. So if you Google get samples for Power BI, um, you will find it. I will also post a link in the uh, video description below in the video where you can get it from there. So if you go here and then scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, you will see download original sample Power BI files. And the uh, report that I'm going to use is this retail analysis sample uh, Power BI. So go ahead and uh, download this if you want to follow along with me. Uh, now, when you download this, uh, it will have uh, the Power BI uh, model and, the, um, and the, uh, the visualizations and everything. Um, but uh, it, it has the data, but it doesn't, uh, if you go to edit it, you will run into an, any, uh, some error. Um, so if you do want the sample data that's used here, um, you'll also need to download the retail sales analysis sample. I'm just going to download this Power BI file. Uh, so you can go ahead and download it. I've already downloaded it. So let's go over there. So this is what um, this file is. And in this, uh, this is Power BI. Uh, this is a report that's built by Power BI. Um, and in this, um, you'll see it's a store level sales data. So if I go over here, let me give you a quick overview of the data itself. Um, so there is a district level data, um, store level data, and in the store level data, you have the territory, the name of the city where that store is, um, and when it was opened, what the size is, and then overall sales, um, and then lots of other things, uh, typical sales uh, stuff that we have. And the purpose of uh, doing the clustering here is uh, when you're doing a Power BI uh, reports, it's very, um, usually you create KPIs and charts like this, right? So we show sales over a period of time, um, the area chart, the, cluster, uh, the, the scatter plot and everything. What it doesn't give you is quick insights into uh, the data itself. So let me show you really quickly um, what I mean by that. So if I create a cluster chart, for example, let me go here um, and then click here and let's go to the cluster, uh, let's create a cluster chart. And in this one, let's say I want to analyze um, sales this year. So let's put it on the x-axis. So sales this year um, and then uh, margin this year. Um, and then we want to analyze it by, uh, the, uh, by the store. So I put it in the details and you see this. Now in this case, let me make it fill. So we go to fill point and let's fill this. So when you create something like this, um, you uh, quickly can get some insight out of this. You can see some, there are some cluster over here. So there are, um, there are some stores that are clustered together in the uh, bottom left corner over here um, that have uh, sales that are very similar. Overall, we do see that the sales, there is a linear, strong linear correlation between uh, the sales and um, you know, the gross margin, which is not surprising. Um, but the purpose here is understanding how these stores are clustered together. So I see one set of uh, stores over here, uh, then maybe another set over here. And then this seems to be an outlier right over here. So well, perhaps maybe one, two or three, four different clusters in this case. Now, if you click in uh, this ellipsis and then go to automatically find clusters, Power BI will create, um, look at the data and then create uh, clusters for you. But this is bivariate uh, clustering, meaning we only have two variables uh, that we are using to form the cluster, this year sales and the gross margin uh, this year. But what if we want to analyze data um, with number of different measures or with the number of different uh, matrix that you have? For example, let me create a table. Um, and in this case, 
we want to analyze the store. So I'm going to put the name of the store and then I've created certain um, KPIs and these are all built in KPIs or measures. Uh, so that's why just go ahead and download that Power BI file and it's all in here. So average unit uh, price, uh, average unit, uh, average dollar per unit. Um, so uh, how much you, that gives you an idea about what is the, uh, I guess the basket size or what the people are purchasing in that store. Um, number of open months. So this is uh, when was this store open? So that gives you an idea of if it is a new store or an old store. Uh, margin variation uh, percentage. This is a percentage. So what this is doing is it's it's looking at, let me click here and then you can look at this. So this is taking this year's uh, margin um, and then subtracting last year's from it. So that tells you uh, if the margins have uh, improved or not. Let me click on percentage here so we can see that in percentage. Sales per square foot. Um, so this is uh, based on the size of the store. Um, for that store, you know how much it has sold um, this year. And then total sales uh, variation. This is a percentage as well. And again, if I click on this, um, you can see the measure over here. This tells us um, compared to uh, uh, last year, how is our sales uh, doing? If it is positive, um, then compared to last year, we have improved the sales. If it is negative, um, the other way. So we create this, um, and but now our goal is to understand uh, what is this uh, data uh, telling us? Can we get some more insights out of this uh, from this data? And there are lots of statistical ways you can do that, but one very quick way um, to do that in Power BI is to use the built-in clustering. If you, when you create a, this only works in the table, not in the matrix, but when you create a table like this um, and then click on the three ellipses with more options, you will see the same option um, automatically find clusters, um, which what we saw in the bivariate uh, cluster pl uh, scatter plot that we created. And it shows the exact same uh, thing here. So I'm going to call this as our clusters. Um, let's call it store clusters. And it is asking us for the description. Um, and let's say these are a cluster for stores. And then number of clusters, that how many clusters you want to form. If you don't specify anything, um, then Power BI will automatically find number of clusters uh, based on um, certain evaluation metrics. So in this case, Power BI is using k-means uh, clustering. So in k-means clustering, it finds the uh, finds the centroid based on the centroid of um, uh, all these uh, features that we have available over here. It will maximize um, the intra-cluster uh, in, intra uh, uh, distance and then minimize the intercluster difference uh, between the two. You can look it up on Wikipedia and you'll find some um, good literature on it or I'll provide it in the video description as well uh, down in the description. Um, but uh, all you have to know is it finds cluster based on uh, the distribution, overall distribution um, of, uh, uh, of the data um, here. So I'm not going to specify any clusters here. I'll let Power BI do the job for me. So I'll click on OK, and as soon as you click on it, you will you will see that it creates a um, creates another um, column over here, uh, and now it created clusters uh, for us. And let's see, let's go over here, and then we'll see the store cluster, right? So let's pull up it here, and then see what's going on. Um, so there is a blank which I can get rid of. Let's go here and filters on this visual. We don't want a blank. Okay. Um, so there are six clusters and let's see how many we have. So in the first cluster, we have um, 33 stores, second 21, third cluster has only one, and then 15, 15, um, and 17. So total, there are 102 stores, um, and Power BI has created six clusters for us to analyze. 
Now, this still doesn't tell us uh, the whole story. So what we can do is, again, uh, let's go back over here and then I can put it and then put all these uh, measures that we have created right over here and then try to understand what this is doing, right? Um, I guess one thing that we can see over here is maybe cluster one and three, the margin variation is negative, negative, and this is negative, but cluster three has uh, uh, has the most negative number. So I guess that's one difference. It also has the sales variation is the highest for it. Um, overall, the sales reduced compared to last year across the board for all the clusters um, and you know th things like that. But still, this is one step ahead, but it still does not give us the full insight um, or it is very hard to get insight out of this. And at the same time, it is very hard to convey the insights to your business users from this. One of the ways you can do multivariate analysis, and I use this very frequently in my own work is uh, using um, what's called as a, uh, a parallel coordinate chart. So Power BI uh, built-in visual, uh, it, it does not have the parallel coordinate chart. Uh, you can go to uh, import visuals um, and then get the parallel coordinate chart from them. So let's say, for example, if you go here and then look for parallel and then click on this, and if you scroll down, there is this um, yeah, a parallel coordinate chart and then you can click add. I already have downloaded the part, this chart. So let's click on that. So I click on the parallel coordinate chart and we um, enter the same uh, data that we have. So in this case, I want to include um, the name of uh, the name of the cluster, not the name of the city, but the name of the uh, cluster, the category. Um, in the tool tips, maybe we can add uh, the name and then we add the rest of the stuff. So the KPIs uh, that we have here that we want to analyze these stores by. And let's add all of these here. Um, okay, so this is good and I'll, I'll, um, I'll explain what this is doing and what it is. Um, but let's also maybe um, you know, add a map here so go ahead and there should be a um, maybe postal code that might work so let's add uh, the location and then in the legend we will add um, our clusters <clears throat> so let's add clusters in the legend um, so all good now let's look at what uh, this is doing if I maximize this, the first thing you will see on the left side, all the way to the left, is the names of the clusters. And these lines, these lines indicate uh, the average amount um, for each of those clusters. So the, the, the features or the columns that we added, the, the measures that we added, um, so name of the cluster in the bottom over here, then the average um, price per unit this year, is this line over here. Average open months is this line and so on and so forth. So the very first thing that you notice uh, in this case is um, the, if you see this line over here, uh, which is this line over here, is completely separate from the rest of the group, right? So that is number one thing that we see that it is completely different from, and so let me, let's go ahead and click on that or find out what that line is. Um, so it looks like that one is cluster number three or is it cluster number four? Yep, so that's cluster number three. And cluster number three is just one store um, and it is, um, the way we would explain that, that it is completely different from the rest of the stores because it's, um, because the margin variation is the highest. Um, so the margin drops significantly compared to all the other stores that we have. The total sales variation, percentage variation for this store is also um, the highest. 
Um, so it is good to say that this is the worst performing store and that's why it is uh, an outlier. Um, so that's, I guess, num you know, one insight that we could, uh, we can quickly get um, from, uh, from this analysis, which otherwise would have been very hard to get just by looking at a tabular data um, or some charts. Um, now, let's see if I, let me create a, um, so it's easier, let's exclude, we already know what that cluster is doing. So maybe we can get rid of that. So let's use everything um, and then exclude that one particular cluster. Now we have the rest of the cluster. So let's go one by one um, and look at each of these measures. We can see the average unit, uh, average price per unit. It, clearly there are two, are, um, how, the way these stores are operating, there's clearly two uh, different clusters within this. That one that have average unit price, that's 510, uh, whereas the other units, uh, other stores have much higher um, average unit uh, per price, um, average price uh, per unit uh, for this year. So that's number one. And as a business user, you might want to understand why that's uh, the case. Maybe the way where these clusters are located or these stores are located are in completely different geographical locations than the other. You know, that, that could be um, completely be the case or the type of store it is, uh, maybe, you know, that, that could also be the case. Um, another way is average open months. Again, um, very easy to see here. We have two stores that um, are relatively new, and then there are three stores that are um, that that have been that were opened um, a little over nine months ago. So they have been in operations longer than uh, these stores over here. And then we can pinpoint on that, right? Now we can, if you want to understand, okay, um, the stores that are um, uh, that are old for them, within them, how are they performing? So if we, again, um, just zoom in on three, these three stores and then follow the line, you will see that on these three uh, clusters over here. Um, so this is going up, this is going down, and this is again going down. So there are three variation, but if we look at this, it goes up, goes down, um, and then goes down. So among the new stores, there is one store that's doing significantly better um, in terms of sales per square foot compared to the other one. So you might wanna look at which, what these two are and how, why are they uh, performing um, that way. Now let's look at uh, the map on the right-hand side over here. And we did not enter any geographical information um, related to these stores at all. But at a very high level, you can see right away who, how these clusters um, are formed. So all the red ones, so that's cluster number two, all the red ones are up here, which is the Northeast uh, region, I guess, Northeast uh, Territory um, region in the United States. The blue ones, which is the cluster number one, this is, and cluster number one is has the most number of uh, stores. So cluster number one has uh, is in the south or maybe southeast uh, region. And so there is a clearly um, a regional difference in terms of how these um, stores are behaving. And that could very much explain why there is a difference between, um, uh, difference between uh, these, how these stores are uh, performing. Now, uh, you could take this analysis uh, even further to understand uh, different variations. So um, as an example, I would create, go ahead and create maybe more um, scatter plots um, to deep dive into the data, understand the differences more, um, and then create uh, more analysis uh, uh, based on this. Uh, but just wanted to show uh, how you can use the multivariate clustering uh, in Power BI. If you, uh, one thing that you have to watch out for is to do this kind of analysis. Uh, let me show you. To do something like this, uh, let's go open month. I'm just gonna open store, not count, but 
selling area let's see store number it doesn't make any sense here i'm just gonna um, show you something uh, yeah if you see um, you'll see an error that number of fields exceeded and when you see something like this what you have to keep in mind is this only works when you are using measures you have to create explicit measures so which if you saw um, what i did earlier this table is completely done uh, based on um, uh, based on the um, the measures that i had uh, created uh, so uh, if you want to do this uh, create explicit measures and then do the analysis and it should work now some again drawbacks of doing an analysis like this is you have to rely on what power bi is providing you um, in my own work uh, if i if i'm doing this um for my um for my own company um, then i i wouldn't i mean I, I would use this as a first pass analysis uh, but i would use python or create a machine learning model um, and do uh, more clustering um, so this is using uh, k-means clustering which is a centroid based clustering algorithm um, so if there are some non-linearities in the data it won't be able to capture it um, accurately um, so, you know, some things to, you have to keep in mind. Also, if you add a new store, uh, it won't automatically get added to the cluster. You'll have to rerun the analysis and then it will get added to the cluster. Um, as an additional exercise, uh, what I would suggest doing is um, you can uh, do a, uh, uh, you can, so there is something called as a fuzzy clustering or a cluster uh, uh, cluster switching that you can add some uh, temporal data to this like a time element to this to see how the clusters move and if a cluster has moved from uh, one uh, over a period of time so maybe uh, two years ago this cluster was in uh, this store was in this cluster the following year it went to this and that may also give you more additional insights into um, this uh, i will be releasing more videos on this topic especially on how to do time series analysis and time series clustering uh, to get insights from your data. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Hope you like this video. Thank you.